Hello everyone, welcome to this course on REST APIs and CLIs for Exadata Cloud Service. My name is Bal Sarma and I'm part of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In this module, we will discuss primarily on APIs and CLIs which are provided by Oracle for facilitating several tasks. It is highly recommended to use Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console to perform any activities wherever possible. But there could be use cases where having knowledge of these APIs and CLIs might help. So before I proceed further, let me take a pause here so that you can go through our safe harvest statement. The objectives of this lesson is to provide you information on various APIs and CLI which are available in Exadata Cloud Service as of today. I will explain briefly about the usage of these APIs and CLIs. We will discuss on Dbus CLI which is a command line option available on Exadata Cloud Service and brings several automation for end users. We will also talk about OCI CLI and see how it can be configured in the environment to manage Exadata Cloud Service systems as well as uh, we will also look at the use cases associated with OCI CL. We will also go over how to use Exa CLI for getting details from Exadata Storage Cell, which is an important component on Exadata Cloud Service. We will also briefly cover DBAS API and its use cases for manual creation of databases wherever applicable. And finally, I will take you to my demo environment and show you how you can take advantage of these tools for your operational needs. Let's see what Exadata Cloud Service provides in terms of these command line options. So primarily there are five APIs and CLIs, starting with uh, Dbus CLI, which supports a variety of lifecycle and administration operations, such as database patching, software library updates, Oracle home maintenance, PDB operations, and also dealing with TDE management, which is part of advanced security option. The other command line tool we will look at is OCICL and almost all of the operations which can be performed from console such as database system launch or DB creations, deletions or any operation you do with uh, your VCNs uh, related resources such as creating a VCN or creating a user or identity dealing with uh, uh, such operations uh, like CPU scaling etc. They all can be performed by OCI command line. Exa CLI is used to execute a specific cell CLI commands from compute node to the Exadata storage server that are associated within your Exa CS environment. So use cases for getting a storage cell matrices as well as diagnostic information and uh, users don't have direct access to storage cells in Exa cloud service. So this is the only command Exa CLI which enables you to uh, get those details from your storage cell. So the next option is Dbus API and uh, we'll talk through like manual database operations which Dbus API supports. Though it is not recommended to use Dbus API uh, for those tasks which can be done from OCI command line or console for database tasks such as uh, creating a database or deleting a database. But there could be cases where you want to create a database manually uh, just for your testing purpose. Uh, so for those use cases, we'll see Dbus API, how uh, it can be used in the environment. One thing to uh, make a note here is like, if you create this database uh, from a Dbus API command, you might not see them in the console because cloud tooling and other activities, they need to see databases there and there could be issues. Uh, so better to use OCI command line or console for uh, such activities. The next command will look at a backup API and this API supports backup lifecycle, creating configurations for a specific backup or changing a configuration for your backups, uh, doing uh, any kind of restore operations uh, within XRCS environment, they can be easily done using uh, this API. So there could be console uh, which might show uh, these backup functionality going forward in the future. Uh, and then like users can decide on whether uh, they want to use this API or like they want to use the console for performing these tasks. But at the moment, uh, we have only option to use backup API for uh, doing any backup related operations on XRCS. So we will start with the uh, Dbus CLI, uh, which is 
basically to provide and manage all the lifecycle operation of databases. And it's a command line interface for uh, different tools to be used within Oracle Cloud Database. And command line interface supports logging or command history as well as autocomplete operations. Um, few of the uh, input which it expects is uh, one is database name and you must uh, specify the database name as an additional parameter for all of the commands. So database name is the instance that you want to work with. So there are a variety of lifecycle and administration operations which are supported using Diva CLI such as starting and stopping a database, starting and stopping the Oracle NetListener. Uh, you would be able to view information about your Oracle homes. Uh, if you want to move a database to another Oracle home or delete an unused Oracle home, uh, you can perform database configuration changes. Uh, you can manage the Oracle database software images. Uh, you can do pretty much uh, most of the operations which is uh, basically performed on a PDB. Uh, you can perform a database recovery. You can deal with uh, rotating the master encryption keys. So now we'll look at uh, some of the uh, important considerations uh, before using this uh, Diva CLI tool. So updating cloud tooling on Exadata Cloud Service is an important step uh, because cloud tooling includes the fixes for existing issues as well as new features. And it is highly recommended to upgrade the cloud tooling once any new version or release is available. And it is important before even trying a patching using Diva CLI. Uh, when you update the cloud tooling on database deployments uh, hosting a data guard configuration, you must perform the update on both the nodes. That is one which is in role of PrimeG as well as the other database which has a role of a standby database. So before updating, you have to make sure or you have to know what is your current version of cloud tooling. And for knowing that, you can log into one of the node. Uh, in this example, I'm logging to my first node of Exadata and uh, I'm issuing a command rpm qa slash grep i device tools. So this is returning me the version of cloud tooling which is available at present on my uh, XRCS node. The next task would be to uh, look for the list of patches which are available for your environment and for getting that information you have to use Diva CLI patch tools list. So it will list out all the possible uh, new updates which are available for your environment and you can either pick uh, any specific patch you are interested in applying or you can also update it to the latest patch and the command for upgrading to latest cloud tooling it could be diva cli patch tools apply with patch id and you can uh, provide latest as an argument uh, with this command so additionally like if uh, you don't want to give it latest you can specify any uh, patch id which comes from the list command output the next important thing to know here is it makes sense to have the automatic cloud tooling updates uh, done um, by itself and Diva CLI supports uh, uh, automatic uh, patch update feature. So for using that you have to do Diva CLI patch tools auto enable. So what this command does is as and when there is an update on cloud tooling it will upgrade the environment. So think of on XRCS, you have two nodes and it is going to update it on both of the nodes. At the same time, like if you want to disable automatic cloud tooling update at any point of time, you can use Diva CLI patch tools auto disable command. And that will uh, basically remove the auto update configuration. So how it does is it will create a entry uh, inside the cron tab and uh, that gets checked based on the uh, scheduling and uh, when a new patch is available it performs that particular maintenance task so you have to make sure uh, for any data guard uh, setup you are doing this Diva CLI cloud tooling upgrade uh, on those instances as well and there is a MOS note about how to upgrade Diva's cloud tooling using Diva CLI and it's documented under uh, 2350471.1 uh, MOS ID so you can take a look at it for more details. Now we will try to understand uh, some other use cases of Diva CLI utility. So for using it, you need to connect to a compute node which is associated with Exadata Cloud Service deployment. 
and uh, commands using the db home or db image or csw lib or orx sub commands must be run with root administrator privilege so one of the thing you can do is like for uh, opc user you can always do a sudo for getting to root so you can either use like sudo uh, from opc user or you can basically log into root user and uh, from there you can uh, execute these debug cli uh, commands and these subcommands can take another options as we discussed. So for full list of uh, uh, commands which are supported by Debug CLI, you can take a look at this uh, reference link here. And in this example, I'm showing you how I have logged into the Debug CLI console. So I, from my first node, I issued Debug CLI and that pro provides me a Debug prompt. And if you will type help, it will show you a long list which is supported using this uh, particular CLI. So this results uh, of list could be very long and uh, some of the examples could be like clean DB or enable CNS or uh, you can do database status or database stop, data guard failover, uh, reinstantiate. So all of these commands which are related to uh, lifecycle management operation for a database is possible uh, from Debug CLI. So another example I'm showing here is uh, how you can update your software library. So you will have to give Diva CLI CSW lib download. So what this command does is it will get the latest database images for the XRCS environment. And depending on how many database home you have uh, and the highest level of database home. So in my example, I had 12 to 0 on, uh, compatibility for my grid home as well as database home so i'm getting updates for like all of the three homes starting with 11 to 12. so in case like you have 18c in your environment you will also get an additional entry for uh, 18c database and uh, this particular command is going to download the applicable uh, updates for your environment so before downloading, you might want to look into what softwares are available. And the third example here is showing exactly same. So I have issued Diva CLI CSW list. And here it is showing me I have these patches for database homes available like April 2017, 2018 patch, Jan 2019 uh, yeah, images are also available. Few more images I have is NC April 2018 and 19 for my database versions 12.2 and 12.102. So these are just a few examples on how to use Diva CLI for uh, update related task. And uh, I hope like this gives you a view on uh, how you are going to execute this in your environment. Now we'll look at uh, additional use cases uh, with Diva CLI. And uh, as I said, pretty much all of the database operation can be performed using Diva CLI. You can bounce a database. You have seen like how I was able to list the applicable uh, software updates for my database home and uh, then like we seen how to download it so it can take arguments like version or software version or bundle patch information and depending on the need you can uh, use this command database change password you can specify the database name and you'll be able to change the system system password from uh, this command line interface you can move a database you can start database pretty much you can look at the status you can stop a database you can update the database configurations like redo size or if you want to rename the database unique name so it also provides you pre-check before uh, trying out uh, changing those configurations so in case like if you have to take care of certain aspects uh, you can correct them and then you can go ahead with uh, applying it in your environment it can provide you database home information you can parse those database homes which you are not using you can list the db images and uh, you can do all of the listener related commands like starting stopping looking at the status of listener uh, you can bounce the listener you can perform most of the tasks which are uh, done on a uh, pluggable databases like checking database name or uh, pretty much uh, there are other commands also so so you can uh, do all the PDB related operations uh, with Diva CLI and uh, you should look at the documentation since we are adding more and more features and support to these kind of CLIs. Uh, so the documentation might change and it will uh, be always updated on the latest uh, available options. 
Now we will take a use case of like how to update the software library so that it is going to include a non CDB image. And why I am uh, showing you here is on Exadata Cloud Service by default when you create a database any 12C or later uh, it creates a multi tenant architecture means it's create a container database and pluggable databases. So many existing databases, especially e-business suite uh, implementations, they use a non-CDB database architecture. So that could be a use case, uh, may, might be applicable to your environment. And uh, here we are going to see how we can create a non-CDB database. And the first step is to look at what patches and tools uh, are available. So Diva CLI patch tools list this will show you what uh, images are available for uh, your database uh, environment so this command we seen earlier also it is listing me all the uh, db versions patches and images available and from there you can use diva cli patch tool supply and patch id with the latest so latest is going to uh, upgrade your cloud tooling and once you are done with uh, your uh, upgrade of software library on your service you can create the required non cdb image version uh, as well as bundle pair patch update so you can upgrade the software library on your service with the required non cdb image version as well as bundle patch and the command might look like a diva cli csw lib download hyphen hyphen version and you are specifying the version uh, which you are interested and then you are specifying bundle patch and jan 2019 with hyphen cdb no so this argument is indicating to diva cli that uh, download me the jan 2019 patch and that should have compatibility of uh, uh, non cdb database so i know that the like, jan 2019 supports that image so uh, you can always use this command to get that image downloaded and once you have this uh, uh, software in place you would be able to create a non cdb database so we'll see an example uh, on how we can create it using Dbus API uh, when we go further uh, in the slides. So you can uh, also use Dbus CLI for patching operations on database and uh, it is for database homes as well as uh, grid infrastructure software home and Dbus CLI simplifying uh, the patching operation. What it does is internally it uses XRDBC patch multi command uh, but uh, it's just an uh, wrapper on top of it and uh, simplifies the, the patching operations. Using this uh, CLI utility, you can list the database patches. You can provide an argument which uh, host name or uh, database form uh, you want to list the patches for. You can do patch prerequisite check. And uh, again, like several combinations are possible. You can do it with database names. You can go with instances over here. When it comes to applying a patch, uh, Diva CLI uh, supports that as well. And uh, you can uh, specify from which particular node the data SQL is going to run. Uh, then it also provides uh, rollback operations, which are renamed as switchback in case of Diva CLI. And uh, you would be able to uh, reward the applied patches from your environment using this uh, switchback operation. So we are not going to uh, talk more on this because I have already covered this topic uh, under uh, patching for XRCS uh, topic. So you can go into that and like, understand more if you are interested in. The next command we will uh, learn about Diva CLI uh, ResDB and uh, it is for registering on-prem databases into cloud. So why we are doing this today, if customer brings his own copy of database into cloud, uh, the tooling is going to fail and it will not recognize it. So Diva CLI ResDB, it provides APIs for customers to register his database so that tooling can be used for any subsequent activities like backups or like for patching. So there is no downtime required to use this utility if the database meets all the requirements. So tool provides better customer experience with the minimum downtime to migrate customer databases into cloud. So there are certain steps uh, we have to follow here. So the command uh, which you see here, like diva CLI resdb prereqs, and then it will specify the database name, and then uh, resdb begin. So these are the two important commands, and uh, 
we will see what steps could be involved uh, for bringing a database uh, from on-prem environment to cloud. So these steps could be around uh, what you can do is like create a database with the same as an on-prem database so that the cloud registries are populated. So this is one of the important aspects like if you are bringing a database uh, from your on-prem to Oracle Cloud, what you can do is go to the cloud console and create a database with the same name. So what that will do is it will create all the required entries, all the cloud tooling related configuration and then you can uh, remove the database outside tooling. So don't remove it from the console, you use RMAN or uh, certain commands which you normally use in database environment to drop that database. When you will uh, remove it using RMAN, then you can bring the on-prem database into cloud environment uh, through different methods. So you can use a cold backup or RMAN backup or you can set up a data guard configuration and activate. Once the prerequisites completes uh, successfully as we see here in the command diva CLI res db prerex uh, with the database name, uh, database from the on-prem uh, must be like of the same name as cloud database that we created uh, which I brought uh, some time back. Then database would be at the same patch level also. So just make sure uh, both the database patch versions are also um, same. And uh, there could be some warnings as part of testing this prereq uh, here. And you can ignore uh, some of the warnings like uh, related to DBID or domain or service names or uh, TD valid status. Uh, kind of warning so those are uh, ignorable if you look at the register flow you are creating a new database from cloud ui uh, then you are removing the cloud database using rmen you are copying or set up the on-prem database to the cloud vm you will set up the valets and configure encryption and run the pre uh, requisite check using diva cli so whatever warnings are coming apart from the ignorable uh, errors you can correct them it could be related to uh, maybe redo log size or control files so you correct them and then if there are no warnings then you can continue with the uh, begin uh, operation so as part of uh, uh, running the prerequisites check uh, it creates a log file also and uh, you can take a look at the log file and uh, see for the completion message that prerequisites uh, check is completed successfully and then only you uh, proceed with the SDB uh, begin command. So I have got an example here. What I'm doing is I'm running a prerequisites check uh, for a database XRDB in my case. So this database I have created manually just to use this command and uh, show you that uh, what needs to be done. And uh, here it shows me prerequisites uh, completed successfully. So might we I have gone through uh, several uh, iterations it might have complained about a few of the parameters so i corrected them since this database was not created from the console uh, or through oci's command line it was created manually using device api method so assumptions is like database from on-prem must be of same name as cloud database created as well as database should be at the same patch level and then this tool is going to register it and all the cloud tooling is going to work so for running the, uh, the register command, uh, you will be using diva cli resdb begin and uh, then it creates a log file also which you can uh, look in real time what's going on behind the scene. Uh, it runs the, all the prerequisites check and once that is completed then uh, it is running OCD which might take time and then it gets completed. Then you should be able to see a message that database is registered as cloud database. And for getting more detail on uh, this command, you can look at one of the MOS node, uh, which uh, is migration to Exadata Cloud using simple data guard approach with minimal downtime. And here, uh, you would be able to see how ResDB command is used uh, for the manual database to get on uh, Exadata Cloud system. Now we'll switch to OCI command line. So OCI command line interface, it provides all the features access of OCI console through CLI. So this tool facilitates automation when interacting with OCI services and OCI CLI needs to be configured with proper authentication credential to communicate with OCI service. So we have already seen in OCI uh, related lectures on identity access management. So there are various ways you can use uh, uh, 
uh, either OAuth tokens or signing keys or username and password to authenticate to your services on OCI. In this example, uh, we are going to use the API signing key uh, which is needed to communicate to any cloud tenancy. We'll uh, look at it uh, later in the slide how those configurations are done. Uh, first step is to uh, install this OCI CLI, you, you can use either a Linux machine or Windows compute uh, environments. So not necessarily you are going to uh, install this tool or command line option on XRCS node. So ideally it should be uh, separate from there like on any other compute. It could be your uh, monitoring infrastructure in the cloud. You can install these on uh, these Linux or Windows machines. And uh, when it comes to operations supported by OCI CLI, there are several operations uh, which it supports, like to control the Xarata, IO Resource Manager. You can either use console or the CLI options. You can manage the database deployments, means you would be able to launch a database system and you can control like a start, a stop the databases uh, using command line. Uh, you can scale the database, you can add another keys, you can provision it, you can manage the compute node operations and see the service level details. You can list out uh, any networking resources you have. You can do large data transfers using OCI command line. It supports a variety of uh, uh, use cases uh, which is applicable for managing XRCS. So now we'll get into the installation of OCI CL. So you need to open up a Linux terminal and uh, you need to run the installer script. In this example, I'm considering a Linux machine, but uh, you can install it on Windows. The commands are going to be a little different, which you can look into documentation. So you need to choose the directory where you want to save the executables as well as the script of OCI. And another thing you have to make sure is uh, the machine where uh, you are going to install this has the internet connectivity. So once you have internet connectivity, it will start installing. So Linux OS should have internet connectivity. It will prompt you to update your path. Uh, you need to select yes. And then after selecting the path, installation will become successful and you should see it in the message which comes uh, uh, from on the console. To check the OCI CLI installation, if it was successful, uh, you can type OCI help and uh, it should be able to tell you the version of OCI command line which has got installed in your environment. So once CLI is downloaded and installed, uh, the next step is to configure it for your Oracle tenancy. So now uh, let's talk about how to configure uh, once your installation is done. You have already validated with OCI uh, help command that uh, command line option was installed successfully. And once the installation is done, you need to run another command that is OCI setup config. And you can accept the defaults for config locations and need to provide several other details uh, we will see in the example. And for finding those details which are required for uh, completing this uh, particular step, you will have to log into your web console and get some values. So one of such thing is like getting the OSID uh, of the user and for finding that one you will have to navigate to OCI console then you will have to go to identity then under users select the user for whom you are uh, doing this setup and copy the value of OSID. So if you uh, I uh, know the OCD is basically an unique identifier for all the resources in your tenancy. So for either it's a user or it's a database or any file, everything is going to have a different uh, identifier that is known as uh, OCD. Then again, continuing with uh, the same step. So once you run this OCI setup config, it is going to first ask you the location of your config file. And uh, once you provide that location, it will ask you user OSID and uh, you have already obtained uh, this particular value from uh, OCI console as we discussed previously. Then the next thing it is going to prompt you to give a tenancy OSID. And again, like for getting this one, you will have to log into your console and under administration, uh, you will have to look at tenancy details and that will get you the OSID uh, of that particular tenancy. Then it is again going to ask the region and uh, that is the region your admin has subscribed. 
so it could be us as bond uh, region or phoenix region or toronto region uh, so select the correct uh, region uh, and then it is going to ask for generating a new rsa key if you don't have the keys you can type yes so it will generate a new one for you and if you already have one you can type no and then it will prompt you to give the location of your private keys once you have generated the new private key or after specifying the path of your private key you should add the corresponding public key in the console so this is additional step and uh, we will see in the example uh, like how we are going to do it so for uploading the public key you will have to navigate to the user under identity and then add the public key which we, we are going to see in the example slide so once adding public is done the configuration will be completed and you will be able to uh, connect with your tenancy so it was a two step process downloading it and getting that installed and then uh, running the setup config command and provide certain inputs which are needed uh, for you to communicate with your tenancy so example here shows like how to get those values which are required by your uh, setup config command so first thing is, was getting the oc of the user and uh, here you see like i have logged in by, with my user and for that user i am copying this value which is uh, uh, listed here and that will be one of the input then another thing is for getting tenancy information it will also have an OSIT and you are going to uh, get it uh, from the console. For API keys, uh, you can uh, specify the public key uh, and this is screenshot shows like it has an option of uh, specifying at the public keys and this is the public key which uh, either gets generated uh, newly uh, using the setup config command or like if you have used uh, a private key, so corresponding public key is going to be uploaded here. This example here uh, shows all the steps uh, we discussed so far. So OCI setup config we ran, uh, it goes through a few of the information like OSID and tenancy OSID and regions and general configuration documentation. So these are some of the ready reference uh, if you want more information on those terms uh, which uh, is asked here. And then you are specifying the location for your configuration. So I have accepted my default, I am uh, installing it using my OPC user and uh, default location uh, within the oracle uh, opc home it is going to create a folder dot oci and inside there will be a configuration file so this folder gets created this is the default you can specify uh, your own directory wherever you want this uh, to, to be configured then it asks for a user OSIT, and i have provided this detail uh, the next one was tenancy OSID and I provided again the tenancy OSID here and the region so I have selected us as one hyphen one there are several regions uh, but depending on your uh, you are going to change this uh, the next step was to either create a new uh, RSA key pair or like use the existing one so here I created yes and in that case it created uh, two files so one is OCI API key public dot pem and OCI API key.pm. So this one is basically a private key and uh, this one is the public key. And with that, the configuration gets complete and uh, it also provides you information on uh, like how to upload it. So if you have not already uploaded your public key through the console, follow the instruction here. So instruction is nothing but uh, you will have to take the value which is in this public key as you can cat to this file and get the values and go to the console within the user uh, which you want to use just update the uh, public key there and that completes the installation component so it is shown here like copy value of public key to OCI uh, console as shown here uh, you have taken the value of the public key and navigate to console under identity and then users select the user and then API keys and add the public key so once public key is done, configuration will complete and you will be connected to your tenancy. And that's where you will start using all of the command line tools uh, which OCICL has to offer. So we will quickly go through uh, some of the commands which you can perform just to give you an idea. You can always uh, refer the documentation, but uh, you can deal with all the IEM compartment operations, means listing all the compartments which are available in your tenancy. Uh, you can create a new compartment, you can get a specified compartment, 
you can update uh, any compartment uh, using OCICL. You can list all the available domains within compartment. Uh, you can uh, perform activities related to users uh, using uh, OCICL. So here I'm listing uh, from my tenancy that OCI I am user list hyphen C. I will provide the root compartment ID and I'm limiting just to three. So you can take a look at the documentation. There are several changes or like things gets added uh, for uh, syntax and uses of those. But uh, idea here is to uh, familiarize you to what you can use uh, with these commands. So you can get any OCI user details. You can create a new user in your tenancy. Uh, you can delete a specific API signing keys. You can create a new Swift password for the specified user. So Swift password is nothing but uh, uh, auth token uh, that is also used uh, for various activities uh, within the environment. Uh, so it could be related to backups. You might be uh, generating this password. They use auth tokens. Uh, you can list the Swift password for any specified user or uh, you can also update the password description or create new one-time password for console user. So several things uh, you can perform a uh, command line uh, when it comes to identity access management. Then when it comes to the database, uh, you can create a database, uh, you can get a database details, you can list out a database within a compartment, you can delete it, uh, you can also look at the system saves. Uh, by using OCI command line. You can perform pretty much uh, all of the operation like DB node stop or start or reset or soft reset. Uh, list all the uh, nodes in a database system. So several commands uh, here. You can launch a database system. Uh, you can use OCI uh, database system launch command. Uh, with this input like generate full command uh, JSON input, it will show you all of the options which are available for a database system launch and then you can customize it and uh, use that one. You can terminate a database system, you can uh, see a database system state. Uh, these details like DB system ID and then the argument is going to take the system ID. So these are nothing but the OSID of uh, your database system. So again, like you will have to get these details from the console. As I said, like uh, there are several commands which will even list the database system. It will provide you those OSIT values which you might need in this particular example. So uh, list a database system or update a database system here uh, in terms of CPU core count uh, means uh, a scaling of that uh, instance. You can list a database version. We'll again look at few more examples. So here I'm showing you how you can um, list the VCN. So OCI network VCN list hyphen C and the compartment ID. So this is the OCID of the compartment and it is showing me all of the VCNs which are created within uh, uh, this compartment. With the output, I can see like the CIDR block is 10.0.0 slash 16. Uh, this belongs to a VCN. Then the compartment ID, I'm getting the DSCP option ID, routing table, security list, and all of that. So depending on uh, your system or setup, you will see these values will change. Uh, you can format these outputs, which comes uh, out of the command using hyphen hyphen output table. I highly uh, recommend you to look into the documentation reference uh, for using uh, all the possible scenarios and uh, uh, more details. So here we see that how uh, we are using uh, for XRCS operation just continuing from uh, before. You can perform any of those CI web console operation that uh, you have privilege to access, modify, delete or create. For example, you can list all the VCNs in a particular compartment and we've seen the example before. So OCI IAM compartment list, it uh, lists the compartment. Then you can again, with the next command, I am able to list all the subnets within my VCN. So OCI network subnet list hyphen C, and then I'm providing again the compartment ID and the VCN ID here, which I have already received from here, uh, my previous command. So you can build these commands. Uh, if you know what can be done, and there are several uh, activities you can perform. This example uh, shows a uh, database list from the compartment. I'm providing the OSID of uh, compartment ID and then a database system ID OSID. 
and it is listing me all of the databases which are available. So in this example, it shows me VMS prod that is the only database with all the characteristics uh, which is listed out here. I've truncated the output because it uh, will be a long list uh, depending on how many databases you have. Next, we are going to look at uh, we can create and delete databases and uh, for creating a database, uh, my example here uh, OCIDB database create uh, database system ID I provided the OC uh, of my uh, DB system ID then the admin uh, password that these are the mandatory parameters so for creation or deletion there are certain mandatory parameters which you will have to provide as I said in my previous example you can always uh, generate all the JSON output uh, for uh, if you don't know the command like what uh, it expects uh, so that will be created which will be easier for you to uh, specify here i'm giving my database name as test cdb and i'm also specifying the pdb name as test pdb and database version i'm instructing to create 12102 depending on your need you can create 18c or 12.2 uh, but uh, the main intention of uh, showing this example is uh, you, you don't have to go to uh, OCI console for uh, doing uh, database provisioning. You can very well do it with OCI uh, command line utility. And one of the advantage of using OCI CLI is like it will make sure all the cloud tooling is going to work once database is created. So that is different than like DBAS API use cases. There you can also create the databases, but uh, I'm not sure like if you would be able to see that and all the cloud tooling is going to work so you might have to do uh, some more work so in order to minimize that uh, we recommend to either use the cli uh, oca cli or use the console for these kind of activities so when i provided this input uh, you see that uh, database on the console it goes under updating a status and it takes some time and you will see the database which uh, you have uh, you are creating within the console so you can uh, create the database you can uh, delete a database by providing the database id and uh, it will remove it from console so as i uh, said in the beginning uh, certain mandatory parameters uh, they are basically database system id uh, the admin password database name and database version you can specify pdb name and character set if you want to next example we are going to look into uh, how we can scale the ocpus in xrcs uh, you can scale a service to ocpu count you want to use so you know on xrcs it can go all the way from 0 to 92 in a quarter app configuration and think of a kind of situation like you are using just uh, four ocpu and you want to go eight or to 92 so it's easy to um, control uh, using oci command line so the syntax is OCI DB system update, uh, CPU core count, uh, you will provide the core count and uh, you will also need to provide the DB system ID and that is going to be database system POSIT. So this example uh, shows how I have done in my uh, environment. One thing you will notice like uh, this host is my uh, OEM host or monitoring host. I have not set this OCI command line on XRCS. But with that configuration, I'm able to uh, do all of the operation. So OCI DB system update, uh, then CPU core count to four DB system ID uh, I provided. This is nothing but the OSIT. And then like it was able to uh, basically scale it. You can see uh, the values which are already set for your database system using get command. And uh, again, uh, the only input is the database system ID here. So now uh, we will move to uh, XRCLI and uh, XRCLI used to execute a specific uh, cell CLI commands and it performs monitoring as well as management function on XRATI storage servers. So one thing you know here is a storage cells in the XRCS environment, it is not directly accessible by customer. The only way to get the storage cell matrices as well as any diagnostic information is through XRCLI. So in order to use this utility, you need to know the cluster name. And for getting cluster name, you can log into uh, one of the node in uh, your XRCS environment. So log into the first node, do a sudo to grid so because OPC user can sudo to grid Oracle as well as root. 
then come on to get the cluster name is CRC, CRS CTL get cluster name. So it will tell you what is your current uh, cluster name and in my case it's XDP cluster uh, 035. So once you have this cluster information available you can next use the XRCLI command and the syntax is like XRCLI you need to provide the login name and the login name is the uh, will take argument uh, like you have got the cluster name so cluster name here underscore cloud user underscore cluster name so cluster name you got from this command and uh, you will append it uh, with cloud underscore user so that will become your uh, xrcli login so then hyphen cookie jar and uh, hyphen c and this value 192.168.136.4 so it is ip address of one of your storage cell and there are several ways to get uh, storage cell details on even a quarter configuration on exa you have three storage cells they will be uh, you can find it in a cell ip dot or uh, several other ways uh, you can see in documentation how to know your uh, storage cell details so once you have all of that uh, it will uh, ask for the password and here you have to uh, make sure the password is nothing but the same password which you use during provisioning of a xrcs system so you provided password for sys and system users and that also becomes uh, applicable for this XRCLI login. So this user will be using Sysen system password. You will have to get that one and then you are able to authenticate to uh, a storage cell. So once you uh, get into this, it will provide you a prompt. In my case, it shows XRCLI cloud user uh, at the rate that this is the IP address of your storage cell. And once you are there, you can perform any activities like uh, list grid disk details or you would be able to list the cell disk, you can list the flask assay or IORM plan, you can look at the flask log, you can look for all of your uh, pluggable databases. Uh, you can also look at uh, alert history or uh, so there are several things, uh, several commands available to be used with XRCLI. You can look into the documentation. Uh, and uh, use uh, depending on your need so you can list out all the cell details uh, it will show you like how many cpu counts or uh, uh, what kind of uh, status like whether a flask as mode is set to write back or like it's uh, uh, not set to write back so all those details you'd be able to uh, list using these commands so the next topic i will move to dbus api and uh, as i said uh, in very beginning that exadata database system include these commands these are command line tools for performing various tasks related to database we highly recommend to use console or oci command line for performing uh, activities wherever you can like database creation or deletion uh, you should be going to uh, oci console and uh, get that done from there but you might see that like you have certain use cases where you don't want to uh, go to console and you want to create a database just manually and uh, maybe for test and dev you don't care about cloud tooling for those databases then definitely you can use this tool thing you you have to keep in mind like you might uh, not see the database you create uh, using dbus api in the console uh, but that might change uh, also, if we are uh, building some functionality uh, going forward uh, so that it will be available in the console also. But at present, we recommend to use uh, OCI CLI or console for these activities. I will show you an example of uh, non CDB database and uh, cloud tooling uh, means on OCI console, we have no way to create a non CDB database at present. So this would be one of the use case for uh, using dbus api this tool expects a json input file and again like it is located under var opt oracle uh, dbus api and uh, you will be running dbus api hyphen i and json input file and all the calls are going to be synchronous uh, except when the status is requested which is going to be uh, uh, synchronous so all calls are by default are synchronous 
So common parameters uh, could be object, operations, actions, and uh, params. So it could have nested JSON object for uh, operation specific parameters like database name or node list or out file or flags. Uh, object could be target object for current DBAS API process to be triggered like uh, for databases it will be DB and uh, there could be operations to be performed like uh, a snapshot or clone or uh, I backup uh, actions could be whether begin or end or delete uh, so we'll go with that and uh, see the steps for creating a database uh, to get it started uh, we will create a directory called DB input a simple input file uh, you can give it any name i prefer to give my input.json and a simple output file called createdb.out so you need to ssh to a compute node in the exadata database system with opc user and sudo to root user and create a directory which is going to hold basically these uh, files uh, for this manual activities so i change directory to db input i created the input file in the directory and we'll see an example uh, we'll create a database configured to a store backup in an existing bucket in the object storage uh, so parameter description you can always look into the documentation uh, for its supports you need to run the utility and specify the input file and when you run this you will be getting an output and there will be uh, id uh, inside that so you will have to take a note of the id uh, create a JSON file to check the database creation status and note the action of the status replace the ID and the DB name with values from the previous step you get then you need to again run the utility with the status file as an input and then check the utility output and this you are going to continue unless the uh, operation is succeeded or failed so we'll look at uh, one of the example as i said uh, we'll create a non-cdb database using non-cdb software image so this uh, activity is already part of the MOS node uh, for non-cdb creating non-cdb database using oracle database 12c on the exadata cloud service under 25282.57.1 so this talks in much detail about how to create a, a non-cdb database but on a high level, the steps are again same. You will create a directory, go to the directory, you will create a uh, createdb.json file uh, that is going to be the input. And a few parameters you will notice here is uh, I have given cdb equals to no, and bundle patch I'm going to use Jan 2019, and the rest of the options like db name, uh, addition or version, admin passwords. So there are a few important uh, parameters or mandatory parameters you can say, but uh, there are a few uh, parameters which are not uh, mandatory, like character set you can even leave. It will by default, uh, it creates L16 UTF-8. Uh, uh, then a uh, node list, I'm not passing anything, means uh, it is not a mandatory parameter from wherever you will run it the database will be created uh, on that particular node uh, additional parameters which i am specifying is backup destination as oss means i'm not interested in disk backup uh, just do a cloud backup here and if i have given that option it asks for container so container uh, details that is the swift object uh, storage bucket information so this bucket i might have created earlier uh, in my storage uh, cloud on oci and then you will have to provide the cloud storage user as well as the storage password. So this username and password is nothing but the auth tokens uh, for this user. And this is one way of communicating to OCI storage bucket. And it is basically uh, one of the method within identity access management, uh, which is used for uh, authenticating to OCI services. In last, I'm specifying output file, and that is createdb.out file. So when you run this step one, uh, it will create the output file. So here I'm doing a cut of that output file which got created earlier. And important uh, information in this is the ID parameters. So ID value is 43. I'm going to track this value in my next command. And it also like provides you the log location. It says that object database status is starting and the output file is here and uh, the also a corresponding log uh, location. So now, since you have already ran this command uh, for creating the database, you are going to um, 
create another JSON file and update uh, the ID information which you have uh, received earlier. So ID 43 we seen in previous command, uh, I have updated it here. The database name is non-CDBA ball in my case and uh, this input of my create dba status dot json so this file i'm going to execute several times and uh, look at when the uh, creation is succeeded so i ran the same uh, uh, command again like dbas api hyphen i create dba status dot json so it is uh, uh, giving information that a status is in progress and uh, id is 43 and operation is create db so you will have to repeat this step uh, regularly until the response indicates that operation succeeded or failed. You can always monitor the log file uh, which you already identified in pre-db.out to follow the progress. So for example, tail uh, of this command is going to show you what's going on uh, behind the scene. Now we'll move to the uh, next API or the last API uh, we discussed in the beginning and that's backup API. And backup setup is done via this backup tool, uh, which is part of basically Divas tool RPM. And uh, you can always check the version of uh, which uh, Divas tool is installed using RPM hyphen QA, uh, great Divas. And uh, you have to also make sure you are on uh, recent versions of cloud tooling. And we have seen examples about uh, how to use Divas CLI. Uh, uh, commands to update or keep your cloud tooling current with the recent version of uh, this rpm uh, backup entries for database for which the backup is configured will be configured on all nodes in etc cron tab and backup channels are uh, load balanced across the available nodes via db name uh, there are two backup entries for each database one for level 0 and level 1 and uh, one for archive logs as well and backup can be configured with uh, one of the following backup destination means uh, it provides you like whether both cloud storage and local storage uh, only cloud storage and none so there are much detail about this topic uh, under this link and for more information you can also look at uh, uh, my uh, module on backup and recovery on xrcs so that talks in much detail about how you can start with the backup configuration or like you can uh, do restore operation uh, where configuration files are written uh, so for more details i would encourage you to either see this link or uh, the session on xrcs backup and recovery so with this uh, we will uh, move to the demo uh, section and in the demo we will uh, go through several uh, apis and clis we have seen and uh, their practical uses and uh, with that uh, let me get into the demo so let's get into the demo uh, to start this demo i have logged into one of my compute node uh, through opc user so from here i will navigate to root user because most of the operations we are going to perform are administrative in nature uh, means I, I'm going to show you the way you will be updating your cloud tooling and again for doing that you need to be root uh, as, as the user so first try to find out what cloud tooling version you have on your uh, XRCS environment so for doing that one you can always use the RPM uh, grep command and you have to look for divas tools underscore xr so here if you notice the divas tool version on my platform is 190409 so this is the version which is available and uh, uh, we need to definitely know what is the latest version available uh, here on xrcs so for finding the latest version uh, you can either like go with the xrdbc patch sm command they would be able to list it out so let me uh, use that command and here uh, i'm again going back to my xrdbc uh, patch sm folder and that uh, command is going to list out the available patch for uh, this XRCS environment. So if you notice here, it is saying that my current version of cloud tooling is 18231190409, which 
which is pretty latest like not very old but it has also found another patch which is available for the environment and that is 1904-15 so definitely this is the latest patch available uh, for my environment on XRCS so I will show you how to update this one so before doing that like updating is simple uh, we can go ahead and like give a command using XRDBC patch to update this so this command is going to is uh, just like this give the tool inst and rpm version equals to latest and you can remove the latest keyword and you can specify the exact patch id which is uh, available here uh, on the screen and it would be able to update that one but before going to that i will show you you can also use additionally diva cli to do this activity so for diva cli command is going to be diva cli patch tools list and again diva cli it is going to use the xrdbc patch uh, uh, internally but it will come up with uh, uh, checking on all the nodes that uh, what is my current tool version and then uh, we would be able to apply that tool so another thing you might have noticed that it is going to check these tools on all of the nodes in my XRCS environment. So this is a matter of choice like you can use any tool if you are going with the first one uh, using XRDBC patch you will have to do this activity update activity separately on uh, all the nodes in the cluster. Otherwise like if you go ahead with the DBus tool uh, you can specify like patch the uh, system. Uh, and it will take care of updating those uh, tools at uh, both the uh, cluster nodes. So here uh, again like as expected it has found a uh, latest uh, passive version which is the latest and the uh, tool also provides you uh, how to apply that one that patch uh, in your environment and it has come up with like diva cli patch tools apply patch id or like you can use the latest keyword so by using this one i would be able to update the uh, divas tools which is needed for any activities like either you are doing patching or upgrade operations or you want to use different apis and clis uh, so it is a better idea to update it so since like we have the command available i will use this approach and try to update my cloud tooling from here So this might take some time, uh, we'll wait for a minute and see like if it uh, comes out. Uh, but this is what it is going to do, like it is uh, looking for the version which is already there and it found the latest version and uh, it is going to take an action and apply the latest pass set uh, in my environment. So since this uh, tool might take a minute or two, so meanwhile I'll bring another uh, terminal and try to show you uh, if we can run a few other uh, API uh, related commands here. I will log into my accelerator node. And in this example, we are going to uh, do DBAS API. And by using that DBAS API, uh, we will try to create a non container database. Uh, just to give you a feel on like process is going to be same whether it's a container database or non-container database but uh, I will be creating a non-container because that is the latest feature we added on XRCS environment. So I will do the preparation stuff for uh, uh, using this device API here and for doing I will navigate to my directory. So first let me uh, go to root user so one thing like opc user can do sudo to any user and i had a mistake in the syntax that's why it prompted for the password so i've done sudo uh, to root and i will navigate to the directory where i'm going to create the input files for debus api 
I have already created a directory over here and uh, I also have few files uh, which I am going to use for my uh, database creation using Divas API. So the first thing uh, for creating this uh, uh, database, I'm going to use this uh, create db non cdb.json file, which I have created for just for demo purpose. So let me show you the content of that. So here I have specified the object as database. The action is going to be a start and operation is create db and different parameters I have uh, provided here. Uh, CDB is going to be no for a non-CDB database. I'm going to use the bundle pass Jan 2019, uh, which you will see like the method to download this uh, to your software library and uh, using Divas CLI command. Uh, but I have already downloaded it, so I'm going to use that for creating uh, this database. I have given this database name as training, uh, the version is e underscore ep uh, version is 12102 uh, the admin passwords which i'm going to use for database creation the character sets uh, backup destinations and uh, here backup destination is saying that i want to have the database backup on oracle object storage container then i have cloud storage container uh, with the uri and that is nothing but uh, the object storage with a bucket already created so i have a bucket which you see here is uh, available on my uh, in my tenancy so i will just verify it uh, quickly that like is the uh, the bucket name is correct or then like cloud storage user it has to be the user which has the access to object storage and the auth token for your uh, user then at the end like i'm specifying the output file uh, from this command and this file is going to be under the same directory uh, with name create db underscore non cdb dot out so this was the first step of creating this input file you will have to make sure uh, that there are no syntactical errors so this uh, 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 colon and uh, the key value pairs are correctly specified in this and then we can uh, go ahead and like run this command so for doing that i'm going to execute var opt oracle divas api and divas api uh, inside and with the argument as create db non cdb dot json so this is going to invoke it the script the json file which i have already created and it will give me a command output which is specified within this JSON file. So what I need to do is like I will be looking at uh, this create db non cdb dot out here. So let me uh, cat this file and see what is the content uh, within it. So if you notice here. Uh, this is uh, it says first thing is like for security please remove your input file because they are no more needed now and another reason is like uh, the input file had the uh, credentials for your object storage and sensitive information in it so it is a good practice to remove that one the object is db the status it is showing as a starting and uh, output file is the same which we have specified in the json file earlier and it has given a process id this id is 50 here so this is going to be used for further tracking the output uh, of my divas api uh, create database uh, uh, operation and the operation is create db and there is additional log file which is available here which can be uh, tracked and this should also show you uh, what is going on behind the scene So it does several checks and then like uh, this will be progressing like it will uh, so uh, the values are changing and uh, we can again like since we have already received the uh, process ID here which is 15 my case so I'm going to keep this one in 
uh, the file which will be used for status tracking. So I will create a create db status.json in the same directory and I believe like I, it should be already there. So let me take a look at if I have already created. So I have created a create db status.json file and uh, let me show you the content of that. So this is the second step. So first step, we created the JSON file for database creation. We ran it and then we got the process ID from the out file. And based on that, we are creating this createDBStatus.json file. And uh, in this one, I have already specified the object is DB, action is a status is what we want to monitor now. Operation is create DB. And only thing I have to change is the ID uh, value, which is going to be 50 in my case. And uh, database name is training. So output file again, it is going to be same, create db non cdb dot out. And that is the only change. So I will save this and uh, then I will uh, execute another command to see the uh, command output. So here, uh, if you notice, I'm just passing this create dbs status.json, which we have just now created. And then again, the, we will have to look into the uh, output file. We'll cat this file. And here, if you see, now the message has changed. It is showing that it's in running OCD phase and object is database status is in, in progress and uh, there are no error messages here. Uh, out file is home oracle db input create db non cdb dot out. And now we have got an additional process ID which is PID. So this is basically the OS level process ID which uh, has invoked internally and uh, its source operation as create db so this is this particular input is going to change so we will have to monitor this one several times and uh, at the end like you should see the status as like it's uh, already created so let me check like if the pmon process associated with uh, this database instance create db uh, training has come up or not So right now it is it has not come so it might take some more time and uh, before it get executed but once this progresses you would be able to see and that one like there will be a corresponding p1 process here and uh, that uh, would be able to show you that database is, has got created so let me check like if my previous uh, api output is done or not so uh, here uh, it has updated so it says that like it was executing the command patch tool apply patch id latest current tool version and patch id to apply was the latest updated the device tool rpm to uh, the latest one 19.4.15 so these updates are uh, done so current tool version is uh, on node 2 is showing up as this one and uh, the node one has not yet come so it might be applying that also uh, so here uh, in order to track the progress this command has to be run several times and uh, uh, you would be able to uh, see that there are corresponding uh, log entries are getting generated as well as uh, there are pmon processes and other database processes started so another way to test is like definitely the log file which we saw earlier uh, with the process ID 50. So that will give you a fair idea on uh, if uh, there are progress or not. So here we see that uh, it is still progressing which might take time. So we will get into the other uh, topic we wanted to cover as part of demo and that is going to be uh, Dbus CLI. 
later we can again come back and check the status of the database uh, on this uh, node. So in order to use uh, Diva CLI, you have to enter Diva CLI on the command prompt and then it uh, provides you Divas as your uh, CLI and it also shows you the version of uh, the database uh, database uh, uh, CLI uh, utility and in my case it is showing as 182310 uh, so that is the version which you also see from the Divas tool RPM right so it's 182310 so once you are in Divas uh, prompt you can uh, use several uh, commands which are used for managing the database lifecycle. So one of the thing could be just database status. And as you know, like this uh, if CLI expects hyphen hyphen DB name as the uh, parameter. So provide a database here uh, and see how it uh, gives you the status of that. So basically it is going to uh, provide uh, how many instances I have for my database and where exactly that is running. So it says instance BMS prod one is running on node XRD, XD prod N53 uh, machine, the first node. And there is another instance which is running across my second node. And their corresponding Oracle home, uh, it is showing in the command. And it also tells you basic details like it is 12C uh, extreme uh, performance version of 12.1020. So this this was just a simple command to see uh, how we can manage the status. You can stop the database, you can start the database, you can deal with the listeners. Uh, so think of like I want to know about uh, DB Home for example. So DB Home info then uh, if you will not give any argument, it will show you all of the database forms. Otherwise, you can always specify for which database you want to know in this particular information. So this is what it says. Enter a home name or just press enter if you want details of all the homes. So I press enter here. And it should be able to uh, provide uh, all the database homes which I have on my XRCS environment. So here it is. So it says the home, uh, first home is Aura Home 103.12.102 with a DB patch version. So this is important, a database bundle patch version. This also helps you uh, know which uh, image or database person you have uh, in your environment. The home location uh, uh, it shows as well as like it will give you the patch level of that one and uh, what databases are installed. So this second one which I see here um, is showing that database installed as nothing. So definitely like it will be the one which is just uh, getting uh, installed and that is the non-CDB script like we uh, ran using uh, our DBAS uh, API command. So database is not yet entered in the Aura tab. So that's why it is showing it blank as of now because it's still in progress. For all other databases, it is showing me the home. Like I have a BMS prod which is installed under DB home 2. I have XRDB installed in DB home 4. So all the details related to uh, database home, it was able to show me. The another thing like you can check on like patch uh, tools list you have already seen so uh, we will uh, run some other commands. Uh, this could be CSW live list. So this is the software uh, library uh, on the uh, system right. So as I said XR data cloud service provides you uh, updates in two ways so one is through images the other one is through regular uh, patches uh, as per the moss note like every time like we three months like we uh, provide you different patches available for the platform so this command csw list is listing you out what patches or bundle patches are available for the environment 
and this is starting with April 2017 till Jan 2019 and this is across all the database versions like 18C 11.204 and few are specific uh, till 12.201 right so another thing if you uh, notice here is like list of available non-CDB bundle patch and here uh, we have April 2018 for DB version 12.201 and 12.102 version and also Jan 2019 for DB version 12.201 and 12.102 so since like I don't have a 18C uh, grid install or that was during provisioning I just selected 12c as my compatibility so it is not showing me anything for 18c database version but uh, these are the ones which are available for me to create in terms of non-cdb but for creating any normal database uh, multi-tenant database you can pick any one uh, of these so ideally you would be interested in the latest one uh, for your specific database version So if you want to uh, basically download one of these, so uh, the command is going to be simple. Uh, you will just issue the uh, CSW lib download and then you need to specify the version and the bundle patch tag. So command will, I don't have to provide this debug CLI, I have just copied. Uh, so this is going to be the syntax you specify the bundle patch uh, with the uh, tag which is available here and uh, it is hyphen hyphen cdb no will uh, make sure that like that uh, software gets downloaded so since i already have this uh, bundle patch uh, downloaded in my software library uh, it is uh, going to show you the message that it's already there so idea is like a DBAS CLI can be used for several operations, whether it's patch management or database operations dealing with the database homes. So you can use uh, uh, this one for uh, getting that uh, uh, database operations done. So now what I will do, I will move to another uh, uh, API which we discussed, basically CLI, XR CLI, and show you how to do before I move to the OCI uh, command line interface. So let me go out of it. And uh, for if you remember for uh, using Xareta uh, CLI interface, you need to know what is your cluster name. And cluster name you can always find from your grid infrastructure software. So let me go to grid user first and uh, then show you how to get that. I am into grid user now and uh, now I can issue a command like a CRSCTL command. And it came up with uh, the current cluster name is XDP cluster hyphen 035. So this is my cluster name which I am going to use with my XRCLI uh, command line. So for uh, accessing XRCLI, uh, we can log in uh, from OPC user or Oracle user. So I will go out of this grid home. I am going to my Oracle user. And then so in order to use XRCLI, uh, you, ha you have already got the cluster name and the syntax is XRCLI hyphen login name. Then the user is constructing uh, uh, using the uh, grid uh, cluster name and that is like cloud underscore user will, uh, is the prefix and then we'll add the cluster name in it and then hyphen hyphen cookie jar and then hyphen C uh, followed with the storage cell IP address. So you can specify any storage cell IP address and basically uh, within an XRATA environment depending on the configuration and shape you, you can have multiple storage cells. So that can be uh, found in cell IP.ora as well as in the host file you'd be able to find the storage cell details. So pick one of that and uh, you can enter. It will ask the password for your uh, uh, XRCLI and the password in this case is going to be the same password which we have used while provisioning the initial starter database configuration 
So that was the admin password for session system and the same password you have to provide here. So I have specified uh, the user password and then it asked me that do you want to accept and store the certificate I'm going to uh, store that one and after accepting you are in the XRCLI prompt. So now we can use any command like list grid disk details for example. So it has listed all the grid disk which is available in my XRCS environment. So basically any command which can be used with cell CLI can be done. Only thing is like it is a read only. You cannot change uh, uh, several parameters. We uh, normally can be done with the cell CLI command. Uh, you can track the status of your flask assay. And it says that like it, this is normal. You can also list your IORM plan if you have already uh, enabled. So it says the IORM plan is active for my environment. You can use uh, maybe a list flash log and it should be uh, telling you like, if the status is normal or not. Uh, you can, uh, there are uh, uh, several uh, commands which can be executed using XRCLI. We have already discussed in the concept. Uh, uh, before so you can try with the uh, various operation and uh, see like how they help with uh, the information needed from the environment so here uh, we seen that extra CLI is used for uh, getting mostly the storage cell related uh, details and uh, with that one I will move to my uh, another uh, example where I wanted to show you OCICL so let me go out of this and I will log into another machine where I have already configured the OCICL. I believe this is my, yeah, this is one of my uh, compute node which is uh, running out of OCI and I configured the OCI command line utility on this. So I'm not going to show you how it can be installed. That could be a lengthy process. It might take time. Uh, so I will straight away assuming that you have OCICL already installed and uh, I will show you the usage of that. So OCI help is going to show you if you are able to execute this command, it means uh, OCI command line is already set. And another thing you can uh, check here is I'm in the directory home OPC and since I provided OCI installation directory as uh, the same so here I can navigate to OCI directory and there are several files under this so one is the configuration file then I have the PEM files uh, which I need to uh, I might have provided into the OCI console during configuration so this configuration file um, uh, will have information about how you are going to connect with the uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure uh, and you can add multiple environments so think of like you have uh, uh, multiple tenancy uh, you would be able to access that one so that can be achieved easily through this config and uh, let me show you so I have two profiles here one is my default profile and the other one is profile 2 and both are dealing with two different uh, uh, user IDs basically if you notice the OCD is uh, different in both the cases and they belongs to uh, different tenancy so ten the profile will have information on the user the fingerprint information the key file that is nothing but the public key a PEM format and then the tenancy information and the region information so this list can be longer depending on how many environment you are dealing with but uh, by default commands will be executed what were listed under default uh, uh, profile so you don't have to specify but if you want to access the another profile which is not the default one you can specify the profile name while executing the OCI commands so since like my OCI uh, uh, 
binaries are already installed i have got my tenancy or compartment details so few commands uh, could be like oci network vcn list hyphen c the compartment uh, id oc so this is my xrdata compartment and uh, you know how to get the oc uh, from the console so i will be able to list out all the vcn which i have created for my deployment and this is what you see from here uh, it is showing me the vcn underscore bl which is part of my tenancy so this is one of the way like i'm able to get the uh, vcn information it shows me what is my cider block here the compartment id i'm using default dscp uh, options here my route route table uh, OSID, my security list related details so pretty much all the details i have some more vcns uh, for uh, demo purpose it is listing out uh, all of them uh, so uh, i have uh, So now uh, let's uh, take a look at like how we will deal with the database systems uh, since uh, we want to see how it works for XR data. So another example here, uh, I want to list the databases uh, within my compartment ID and I have provided the compartment ID here uh, and the database system ID. So any Exadata system is going to have a database system ID uh, that will be nothing but a OSID. So that as well as the compartment ID. So it should be able to list all the databases in uh, this one. So uh, you see here I have a database BAL test which is uh, in my tenancy uh, on the Exadata. Then other property, you know, properties associated with that database is shown like whether it's OLTP or what is the database unique name and all of that. Uh, then like I have another database which is BMS PDB it is part of like BMS prod uh, it's a container database here so you see that detail I have few more uh, no so uh, it shows like me in the two databases which I already have in uh, my tenancy so if you want to create a database using OCI DB that can be also done and uh, commands are, are really simple you can specify oci db database create uh, followed with db system id which we know like it's the OSID of the exadata cloud system you have to specify the admin password give any a strong password uh, then database name you have to specify uh, if you want uh, it a uh, multi-tenant you can specify that pdb name here and the database version so this example is going to create a database so again database creation uh, it is not just a pdb creation it is a full-fledged database home will be created a new home to uh, have this database since we are not supporting uh, shared home as of now so it will be a time consuming process but uh, 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 that's why i'm not going to execute this here i will show you another uh, uh, activity which you can perform so many times you have a need of like updating the CPU core count uh, for your if you want to basically scale on XRCS environment scale up or down. Uh, so the syntax are like OCI DB system update and uh, then you need to specify the CPU core count here and uh, you have to also provide the database system ID. So if I make it uh, to four right now i believe like i have set it to four uh, sec two and i want to move it to four so this will show you uh, that uh, all the details which it is going to do so this year quarter rack 2.92 configuration i have a sparse disk group and all uh, somewhere it will show you uh, how many i already have and so i have cpu core count as two initially and that is going to uh, make it four so this operation uh, will take a minute and then uh, you should be seeing that in console also uh, you can verify that uh, the cpu count has increased and database will be in updating a status uh, though you would be able to connect your application all the activities will be done as normal it is just about enabling more cpu on the environment 
So with this, I'm going to summarize this session. Uh, what we have seen in uh, this particular uh, module is what are different options on uh, REST API, which are available for Exa Data Cloud Service Operation. We discussed about DWAS API as well as DWAS CLI and also looked at few of the operations which are supported uh, by them. Uh, we got an understanding on uh, how to configure and install OCI CLI and uh, some of the basic operations uh, which uh, can be done. Uh, so we seen it through example. And we also discussed about EXA CLI uh, uh, component and uh, seen some of the use cases of that one. So I hope you uh, find this video useful and uh, for more details, you can always go to our uh, cloud portal. And uh, I will hope to see you in my next video on, on XRCS topic. Thank you so much and have a good day.